that the Prophet ﷺ used to fluctuate the time of Isha. He did not pray at the same time every single day. Now we have a kind of like a system, I know people have to come for Isha and then they pray and they have to go home, it's like hurry up. And I know it's 9.30, Isha time's coming here now. And someone's going to come in and say, you know, come on, it's Isha time. And they don't know that the Prophet ﷺ used to fluctuate the time of Isha. Sometimes he would pray it early and sometimes he would pray it later. Depending on the companions, if they've all gathered, he would pray Isha early. If they hadn't gathered, they would be in the masjid and they would gather together and it might take some time and then they would pray. And I actually, I've never seen this practice anywhere in the world except in one masjid in Australia. And the reason, I, you know, it sticks in my mind is because I'm like, did you guys pray Isha? And they were like, they don't even know when Isha time is. They're just hanging around the masjid waiting for the imam to come to lead them in salah. And so there was no time, so I said to our parents, you know, we prayed and, and so on. And when the imam came, and it's just like arbitrary, when the imam is ready to come, he comes. It's not like 9.30, where is this imam that keeps coming in late? No, when the imam came, he gave like a half an hour or whenever later, he said, Aqam as salah fulan, and he said the iqam, and then they prayed Aisha. But they are trained to do that. That their connection is with the masjid. It's not that it's part of their, um, their daily, go, go to masjid, go home. They're in the masjid. They live there, those brothers. They bring their studies. They live in the masjid. They don't have to run home for something. This is their life, Aisha, and then they go home and sleeping. Fluctuating. Also, the enlivening of the sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ, many of you might use miswak, or at least you know the sunnah, of using miswak before Salah. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْلَا أَنَا شُقَ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي If it wasn't for the burden of place on my ummah, I would have commanded them to use miswak at the time of each Salah. Another hadith, which is the same wording, basically, the Prophet ﷺ said, if it wasn't the bur- for the burden I would place on my ummah, I would have uh, made Salatul Isha in the middle of the night. Meaning that you would become, the middle of the night is about 12.30 right now. The middle of the night, you calculate it by from the time of Maghrib to the time of Fajr divided by 2. That's the middle of the night right now, it's at about 12.30 a.m. That's when Isha would... And the Prophet ﷺ said, he would have wished to do this, but it would have been a burden on the Ummah. But that's the sin of the Prophet ﷺ, he would delay Isha at some time, then he would pray it earlier than sometimes. This next uh, enlivening of a Sunnah is sleeping before Fajr. Now if you're paying attention, you would say, how is that enlivening of the Sunnah? We all sleep before Fajr. And, and the SubhanAllah, one shaykh, he said something really beautiful, and he said, and from the Sunnahs of the Prophet Wasallam that the communities have lost, is sleeping before Fajr. They've lost it. And so someone says, like, how did we lose it? We're all sleeping before Fajr. Nobody's awake at that time. The Prophet Wasallam, he used to pray Qiyamul Layl. And from his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would not pray Qiyamul Layl all the way till Fajr. From his Sunnah is that an hour to an hour and a half, and I calculated it, basically dividing the, um, the clock in our time, it's about sleeping an hour before Fajr. The Prophet, that was his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After praying Qiyam, he would wait one hour of sleep and then uh, get up for Salat al-Fajr. And as we said, Wathaba, he would jump out of his bed to go and pray uh, Salat al-Fajr and lead the, the Muslims in Jama'ah. Right? And that's an enlivened, uh, a sunnah to be in life is to actually make the intention to pray Qiyam so that you can go to sleep before Fajr, inshaAllah. We also see a sunnah that um, is not totally lost, but inshaAllah ta'ala we can work on it. And that is staying awake after Fajr until the sun rises. Staying awake after Fajr until the sun rises. You can almost see like the Prophet is uh, disciplining the Ummah that they should not be sleeping after Fajr. They should not be sleeping after Fajr. As one of the uh, companions, radiallahu anhu, he saw his son sleeping in that sahar time. Like, you know, like, it's, uh, sahar time is before Fajr. Basically in the morning uh, period, and you know, he woke him up, he said, come get up, this is not the time to sleep. He says, this is the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides the provision amongst his ibad. This is the time for you to do your business. And so this isn't the time to sleep, meaning that after Fajr is not a time to sleep. If you sleep, you, like we said, you pray to Isha and go to sleep, you will have the power to get up at Fajr and the power to stay awake after that and a new system in your life will happen. Enlivening of the sunnah also is that 
The Prophet ﷺ told us to make wudu before we go to sleep. Now this is a sunnah that a lot of people don't do. That they're like, every time they go for salah, they like, I already have wudu. Right? So even for salah, then, and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, he would always make wudu for salah. Whether he had wudu or not, that was his sunnah ﷺ. Whether he broke it or not. So it's not that if you don't have wudu, you're now, um, you know, there's no benefit in making the wudu. That there's always that benefit to making wudu. So this is a person who's going to sleep they make wudu, ka wudu as salah. Exactly like the wudu for salah, they make the wudu. Now, I, I was thinking about this. I said to myself, there has to be something in this that will bring a dunya benefit to the person. I, but I couldn't get what it was. And actually, subhanAllah, for this lecture, I interviewed one of the teachers here at Al-Huda School, who I always notice every single day from the four or five years that I've known this brother, that he's always energetic from the beginning of the day till the end of the day. And if I ask the principal of the school, he knows exactly who that is. Do you guys want to guess who it is? Someone I guess who I'm talking about? I just want to know if you know who I'm talking about. You don't know. Yeah, that's right. Okay, you guys know. See, I told you you know. Everybody knows. This brother, after Salat al Jamaat today, I interviewed him to try to get his secret. And one of the things he said, and subhanAllah, you know, brother Auni, I don't know if it's here, maybe his family's here, but he said that he only sleeps six hours every night. He only sleeps six hours, not the nine to ten hours that'll get you killed, you know. He only sleeps six hours, and he said that one of the things that he does is he makes wudu before going to sleep. And he never misses this dua, the dua before going to sleep. And I said, SubhanAllah, the making of wudu before going to sleep, non-Muslims will say it's good to take a bath before going to sleep. They're almost following the sunnah of the Prophet by some people like, I'm not going to take a whole bath. But if they only knew the sunnah of the wudu, they don't have to take a bath. Because what the wudu, and they actually say, no, a bath, if it's too close to sleeping, all that excessive water might keep you awake. But the, the, uh, the small amount of water that a person uses for wudu, like subhanAllah, look at this. The water evaporates off of the body. And it will cool your body down. And if you know how sleep works, they say, if you've, like it's hot right now, right? You're feeling hot. And it's, um, in a hot environment, you might get like drowsy, but you can't go to sleep. If it's a hot summer night, you're like restless on a hot summer night. You can't sleep. There has to be coolness. Turn on the air conditioner, your body cools and you go to sleep. And so what the wudu naturally does is cool off your body. It cools off your body and it induces sleep. And so I'll, I'll read this to you. It says, to drop off, this is a non-Muslim speaking, to drop off, we must cool off. Meaning that to go to sleep, your body has to be cooled. Body temperature and the brain sleep-wake cycle are closely linked. Your body tem temperature and how you go to sleep and how you wake. If it's a hot day, that's why hot summer nights can cause restless sleep. SubhanAllah. Okay, inshallah, I know um, we're coming to the conclusion. So I just want to go quickly regarding some makruhat, regarding uh, sleeping. Makruh, things that are disliked in the Sharia. Number one, is that it's disliked, and this is from, um, from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, that they disliked, and, and these are the generations of the Ummah that were successful, and we want to follow what they had. They disliked for a person to be asleep in the morning time. So that time, for example, when you, from Fajr time till 9 o'clock, it doesn't matter when you're going to work, that you should not be sleeping at that time. And inshallah ta'ala, if you get a chance to teach everybody about Islam and they realize this, they will, and I don't know about like the Japanese style or something like that, I'm sure they have different styles, but in many like Muslim countries, the day starts at like 7 a.m. and it finishes at Dhuhr time. And people go to sleep, they take their nap, they have ghada, they take a nap, wake up at asr, and then the whole day is free. And this is like the blessedness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ The person who turns from my dhikr, they have a, a constrained lifestyle. And one of the shiyukh, and I know there's people in the UK right now who are listening to this lecture, and I know it's very late and they should be going to sleep. Um, this shaykh went to the UK, and I noticed this in the UK, their cars are so tiny. They don't have American SUVs there. They're just these, uh, they're just tiny cars and tiny houses, <laughs> and tiny apartments. If you've ever been to the UK, everything's so tiny. 
I don't know if it's just my body or something like that. It's just everything's so tiny there. And this shaykh, when he went to the UK, he said, Subhanallah, these are, it's a non-Muslim country. They turned their backs on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah made their life constrained. Everything in their life is a rat race. Everything's tight, everything's economical, they gotta save money, they gotta save this, save that, and so on and so forth. So, uh, from the makruhat is that a person shouldn't be sleeping uh, in, that, in those morning hours. From the makruhat that we know as well is to sleep on the stomach. A person, a person should not be sleeping on their stomach. And I know people, they just like, they just gotta sleep on their stomach, or they say, I'm not actually on my stomach, I'm like kinda, it's a little bit odd. No, don't sleep on your stomach, get off your stomach. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is a Hassan hadith uh, narrated, uh, <clears throat>